There are lots and lots of different approaches to miking a bass drum. Some involve using multiple mics. Some involve, involve baffling the bass drum and doing things with the front head and the back head. Some people like to mic outside of the bass drum. Some people like to mic inside of the bass drum. I like to mic right at the head, slightly inside of the drum if possible. And that basically lets me use the shell as a means of getting better isolation of the bass drum sound. Some people like to use dynamic microphones. Some people like to use large diaphragm condensers. As long as you've got one that can take the sound pressure levels, my preference is to use a large diaphragm condenser in a bass drum. It sounds a little bit more natural than a lot of the dynamic microphones that are pre-EQ'd for bass drums. What, in my experience, what tends to happen with those is any bass drum you put them in comes out sounding the same because the EQ on the mic is so harsh. With a large diaphragm condenser, you're getting the real sound of that drum. Throughout miking a drum set, you're going to find there are a variety of techniques that engineers use, a variety of number of microphones. There's no single right way. It's a matter of what works for an engineer with the equipment that they've got and how they feel they can best capture the sound. With the snare drum, I tend to also like using a large diaphragm condenser mic. And I basically like to angle it over the corner of the head where the mic is equally capturing the head and the shell. And I try to do so in a way that rejects the hi-hats as much as possible. The difficulty in using a large diaphragm condenser on a snare drum is that its sensitivity to high frequencies will enable it to pick up a lot more hi-hat than you would want on that microphone. For miking toms on a drum set, my preference is to use unidirectional dynamic microphones, preferably that have a pretty focused uh, point of reception. You don't want to get a lot of bleed from other things in the drum set. So a, a very common choice in the industry is the Shure SM57, but there are lots of other mics that are fantastic for this application as well, many of which actually can be mounted to the drum itself and are much smaller and, and don't run a risk of getting in the drummer's way. Uh, but if you're smart with the positioning of a larger microphone like an SM57, they also work just fine. I tend to like to get the mic out over the drum a little bit and try to have it point at an angle into the heart of the drum so that I can capture as much of the tone as possible without getting into the drummer's way. Just like with the drums, with the cymbals, there are lots of different techniques people use for miking. Some people mic out in front of the kit right at the height of the cymbals. Some people mic overhead. Some people dedicate mics specifically to the cymbals. I do a little bit of a, a hybrid of all those things. Um, I like to use a stereo pair of overheads up over the cymbals to sort of give a stereo image not just to the cymbals but to the whole drum set. Uh, and a lot of times I'll use that as my primary cymbal miking as well. And depending on the style of music, the sound I'm going for, and a few other factors, I may or may not also close mics and cymbals. Most engineers will agree that the ideal mics to use for cymbals and overheads are going to be large diaphragm condensers, um, but there can always be an argument made for other techniques if someone gets a good result using it. In positioning overheads as much as possible, I try to sort of triangulate the microphone to the heights and volumes of the cymbals that it's going to be capturing the most. This cymbal being the loudest and the highest is going to definitely project more than these two, so I'm going to try to angle this away from that cymbal just a little and try to catch a little bit more of the hi-hat and splash. I'm going to apply the same theory over here the higher cymbal will be closer to the mic and therefore louder, so I'm going to try to favor the position over the right cymbal a little bit more to pick them up more evenly. In the interest of the overheads sounding natural, you also want to try to match their height as well as you can. 
and to maintain the best degree of stereo image, you try not to have them pointing at too many of the same objects. The projects where I'm going for more of a, a modern and perhaps even processed sound, I like to close mic at least some of the cymbals, the ones that would more regularly be used as part of the rhythm, being the hi-hat and the ride. So I'm going to go ahead and dedicate a pencil condenser type of microphone to each of those cymbals at a much closer proximity. Another concern to always keep in mind in placing all of your mics on a drum set is to make sure you stay out of the drummer's way, try to think about the path their stick is going to take, and try not to block that path. And upon completion of setup with all the mics, I always have the drummer play a little and make sure nothing's in his way. The final element of miking a drum set that I try to put some care and attention into is ambient miking, which is basically a means of catching the more natural sound of the drum set, how the human ear would hear it. I generally like to use a, a warmer type of mic, oftentimes a, a dynamic microphone, but in this case just a really warm pencil condenser out in front of the drum set about a couple of feet and typically pointed mostly directly at the snare. And that'll actually just catch a little bit of fill of the snare sound. And the final mic in the setup is usually going to be a stereo pair of room mics out at the corners of the room pointed into a soft surface to help eat some of the high-end reflection so that you really get a nice big warm sound of the room and what the drums sound like in the space that they're in. So I often point the mic towards the acoustic baffling in the room. Just to give it a little bit more natural of a frequency response. Okay, floor tom's not in the way. Okay. No. Every once in a while I push my luck on that one and you have me move it. No, no. I, um... Piano oh, you know right? what might be in the way is... The, 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 I may ask you to back that up. Okay. It's, I think you can still hit the same spot. Right now... Actually, that's not bad. Right now, I'm trying to... The drum tuning... It's not an exact science. We try to go around the edges and get them all even. But at some point, you listen to the drum and you decide that it sounds appropriate for the way it's supposed to sound. And although, if I go around lugs and they're uneven, the drum as a whole sounds pretty good. I don't want to mess with it too much. I'm Andy Hamburger. I'm a drummer in the Washington, D.C. area. I play, I like to think I play all styles, just about any kind of music you think about. And I like doing a lot of studio work. I play with a lot of different bands around the area. And I like doing freelance studio work a lot. And I like working here as one of the many places I like to work. I like it here because I enjoy working with Scott. He's a great producer, engineer, he's very efficient. This particular room sounds great for drums. It's, a, it's not the biggest room in the world, but it, it has a lot of life to it. And um, it just it sounds really good in here. Scott makes the drums sound great. And um, he and I communicate very well. He's very good at getting me to play the correct, the, the, the best thing for the track. And uh, we work well together. And above all, it's fun. I enjoy being here. I'm working for John Nicole, playing some drum tracks. Uh, I, I will probably be playing to pre-existing tracks instead of sometimes I walk in and I'm playing with a whole band. Sometimes I walk in and I'm playing with one or two guys. Or you know, sometimes I'm playing with a scratch track where there's a, what we call a strum and hum. Uh, maybe a guitar demo with a click track and a vocal and uh, I'm putting my drum track down and then the rest of the band will track against my track. Sometimes I'm the last thing on so a song is completely done and then I come in and I add the drums to a completely finished song. Many different ways we go about it. Sometimes I even come in and somebody asks me to freeform and just play for five minutes to give them ideas for writing. Uh, all different ways to make music.
been new stuff here. On this. Yeah. For the last time, my dear. Um, let me turn the click down a little in here, but it will not affect you in there. Every year, with a hug and a kiss and a promise from our lips. Okay, once again, I started conservatively. We would always be together. Happy Valentine's Day for the last time, my lover. Do you remember? We love beneath the covers with a candle. Yeah, I just want to kind of get into the tune and check headphone levels a little, make sure you're hearing what you need. Never go wrong. We would just cool. keep getting better. When I think of all the times we share, throughout the years, how much we care. Thing I know we'll miss the most. Raising glasses in a toast Celebrate those special days The way we do holidays Happy Fourth of July the Last time, my girl Do you remember how the fireworks would swirl With a hug and a promise from our lips We would always be together Happy Christmas for the last time I love Do you remember kissing With a little cover With a candle Getting keep better, getting better. So happy life for the last time, my friend. Do you remember how we thought we'd never end with a hug and a kiss and a promise from our? With a candle and a song We could never go wrong We would just keep getting better When I think of all the times we share Throughout the years how much we care Thing I know we'll miss the most Raising glasses in a toast To celebrate those special days The way we were at holiday Just keep getting better.